小咪，我们接着要继续看《The Mouse and the Motorcycle》的第十一章。刚刚才讲完第十章，对不对？第十章讲什么？第十章讲到他们发现小男孩生病了，好像发烧了，对不对？可是四处都找不到药，因为已经很晚。然后楼下的那个那个服务人员在休息，然后也找不到楼下商店的钥匙，没办法打开。重点是。最近的商店要开很远很远，而且十点钟已经关起来了。那怎么办呢？所以小老鼠 Ralph 要去帮忙找药。Chapter Eleven: The Search. I have to go out into the hotel. Ralph informed his relatives. I've got to help the boy. Oh no! Not out into the hotel! Cried Ralph's mother. Not while the housekeeper is looking for mice. If you are seen, we will all be in danger. I'll be back before dawn," said Ralph, slouchingly. "I must go. Don't try to stop me." See here, my boy. Aren't you being a bit dramatic?" asked Uncle Lester. "Whatever do you have to go out into the hotel for?" "To pilfer a pill," said Ralph. "An aspirin tablet." His answer was dramatic enough, even for Uncle Lester. His entire family stared at him in disbelief. Not a aspirin. Not after his own father had been poisoned by one of the the drab tablet. An aspirin. Ralph's mother gasped. No, Ralph. Not that. Anything but that. It is the only way. Ralph stood tall and brave. The boy has a fever and he needs an aspirin. I'm going to find him one. Oh, Ralph! His mother hid her face in her paws. But Ralph, quivered and Cici, remember your father. You can't carry an aspirin in your cheek pouches. It would poison you. How could you get one here? I will find a way. Ralph was outwardly stiffest in his determination, but inside he wondered how he would manage to get an aspirin into room two fifteen if he did find one. Rolled it, perhaps. Ralph, stay here," pleaded his mother. "You are too young." Let your uncle last her go. Well, now let's talk this over," said Uncle Lester. "I'm not too young, and I haven't a moment to lose." Ralph, who was really frightened by what he was about to do, also enjoyed the drama of the moment. Goodbye. I should return before dawn. Ralph promised me. We will be careful," pleaded his mother. "Promise me you won't climb into suitcases like your aunt and dream, and dream. Ralph's aunt, and dream, who likes nice things, had climbed into a suitcase to ex- examine a nylon stocking. Someone had closed the suitcase, and aunt, and dream, had never been seen again. It was. Hope she, it was hoped she had been carried away to a life of luxury. Promise me, Ralph," cried his mother. But her son was already on his way out the nut hole. Ralph screw, screwed across the carpet of room two fifteen, flattened himself and squeezed under the door. Once out in the hall, his courage. Abbot, the aspirin tablet seems a very small thing to find in such a vast place. It would be much easier to find the motorcycle. No, thought Ralph. I must not even think about the motorcycle. Ralph began to feel pretty small himself, much smaller than he had felt during his show of bravery back in the mouse nest. Down in the lobby, a clock. A clock struck one. 
There was not a moment to lose. He ran to the next room, squeezed under the door, and searched under the beds and the dresser while the two guests slept soundly. All he found was a barbie pin. He skimmed. He skipped room two fifty. To eleven, because his enemy, the little terrier, was still there, and ran on to room two o nine. A hurry search, frightening because of the loud and uneven snores that came from one of the beds, revealed nothing but a few pretzel crumbs, which Ralph did not have time to eat. On and on ran Ralph down the hall, under doors, around under beds and dressers. There was not a single aspirin tablet to be found. In one of the rooms, he did see a penny that had rolled all under a luggage rack, and remembered his mother's wish to leave a tip for room service. But tonight he had no time for pennies. He must press on and find an aspirin. A small doubt, doubts began to creep into Ralph's thoughts as he ran down the hall to the last room on the second floor. Maybe there must, there was no aspirin. Maybe he was risking his life and the lives of his family for nothing. But Ralph pushed the thought aside. He would not let himself become discouraged. If there was no aspirin on the second floor. There had to be one someplace on the ground floor. Tonight he was willing to brave the stairs to find it. He flattened himself and squeezed under the last door on the second floor. There was nothing under either of the beds but the things kids called dust mice. There was no sound but the rattle of the windows and the wind. Ralph started across the carpet toward the dresser when suddenly a light from the bedside table blinded him. He stopped, rooted to the carpet by fear, even though it was not likely that anyone was going to cut off his tail with a carving knife. He heard someone slipped out of bed and uttered a sound halfway between a squeal and a scream. Before Ralph knew what was happening, an ordinary drinking glass had been clapped down over him, and there he stood in a glass trap. Ah, he got caught. By then, his eyes were adjusted to the light, and he found himself facing a pair of bare feet. Bare feet. Looking up, he saw that the feet belonged to a young woman in a pink nightgown. Oh oh! You 看你看，他被抓住了，他被困在这玻璃杯里面了，好可怜。Mary Lou, wake up! She whispered to the young woman in the other bed. Look what I have caught, huh? Said Mary Lou, blinking and raising up. One, uh, one elbow. Her hair was done up and on pink rollers. Betty, are you out of your mind? It must be past one o'clock in the morning. The night was slipping by much too quickly for the trapped mouse. He was terrified and he was desperate. <laughs> <laughs> no one in his family had ever been trapped under a drinking glass before. Worst of all, he was falling key. He was falling keys and endangering his family. Wake up, Mary Lou, and look," insisted Betty. "I was getting up to stop the rattle in the window and call the mouse." This news rose Mary Lou from bed, and the two young women knelt on the carpet to look at Ralph, who promptly turned his back. He did not care to be stared at in his misery. 
but it was no use. The woman moved around to the other side of the glass. Isn't he darling? said Betty. Oh, 至少他是友善的，他觉得他是 darling 哎、欸。Just look at his、um, cunning little paws. Mary Lou leaned closer for a better look. And his little ears, aren't they sweet? He 居然觉得可爱耶 Betty was delighted. It was disgusting. It was bad enough to be trapped and stared at, but to have this pair carrying on his in such a gushy fashion was almost more than Ralph could stomach. Cunning little paws, indeed. Uh, cunning is cunning, ma. Cunning little paws, indeed. They were strong paws, paws for grasping the hand grips of motorcycle. Oh, Betty, do you suppose we could take him back to Wichita with us? Asked Mary Lou. My third grade would love him. So they are teachers, ma. So would my kindergarten. Agreed, Betty. We could keep him in a cage on the latch, and all the children could bring him food from home. It would be such a good experience for them to have a pet in the classroom. They are really teachers, eh? And they are actually quite kind. So maybe they will let Ralph go. Well, thought Ralph grimly. I always wanted to travel a cage in the kindergarten in Wichita. However, was not exactly the destination he had in mind. The minutes were slipping by dangerously fast. He had to do something. Look! He shouted through the glass in desperation. Let me go! Please let me go! There's nothing terribly important I have got to do. Oh, sorry. There's something terribly important I've got to do. He squeaked, marvelled Betty. He's adorable, squirrelled Mary Lou. It was no use. Young woman could not speak his language. Oh, oh. So, not every person can understand him. Ralph was in despair. He thought of Keith tossing feverish. Feverishly in his bed, and of his family huddled in the mouse nest, waiting for his safe return. But I don't see how we could take him back to Wichita," said Betty, uh, sensibly. "We're driving to San Francisco and then to Disneyland before we start back. How could we carry him thousands of miles?" The two teachers looked thought、uh, thoughtfully at Ralph. Who knew his fate depended on their that decision? Was he to be carried to Disneyland and eventually to a lodge in a kindergarten room in Wichita, or would they let him go? A third possibility crossed Ralph's mind. Perhaps they would leave him under the glass for the housekeeper to see. He hoped not. He did not think he could last. Let low, 对啊，会缺氧吧，对不对 ？Already, the inside of the glass was beginning to feel warm and airless. I suppose we really shouldn't turn turn him loose in the hotel," said Mary Lou. "Mice are pests, even if they are cute." The teacher not only destroyed Ralph's hopes. She hurt his feelings as well, calling him a pest, when he was an when he was on an errand of mercy. From the mouse's point of view, the teachers were the pests. I know! Exclaimed Betty, suddenly causing Ralph to look over his shoulder for a clue to what he was, what it was she knew. I know how we can get rid of him without hurting him. The young teacher reached over to the bedside table, where she picked up a pick.
picture Paul's car, she slid it carefully under the glass and under Ralph's feet, so that he was now standing on a postcard. He noticed the picture was of a giant redwood tree. The same postcard all travelers bought when they came to California. Now, what are you going to do? Asked Mary Lou. Watch, Betty. Careful, lifted the past postcard, Ralph, and the glass, and walk walked ac- across the room. Even though he knew it was useless, Ralph scrabbled out around in his tiny prison. He was afraid she was taking him towards the wash basin. He had heard of mice being drowned by people who did not like traps. The teacher walked not to the wash basin but to the open window. She held Ralph across the sill, removed the postcard from the glass, and gave it a little jerk and shook Ralph off into the vines. That group up the side of the building. There, she said, and closed the window, leaving Ralph cling,、uh, clinging to a vine high above the ground. Wow! So they took him out, and he was taken out to the outside. So he was rescued. He didn't die. Okay. Next is chapter twelve. Then how to return to the hotel? What do we do? Hmm. Okay. Let's rest for a while. This chapter is done. Chapter Eleven. 怎么了？你要说什么？呃呃，一，所以这个茶杯。你帮他准备的是不是？你要给他喝是不是？不是。不是。好了，那我停喽，我结束了。The end。